One of the brilliant things about working with NX Tiles for us is that the quality of the production is so high. We take thousands and thousands and thousands of square metres of mosaics from these factories and we have basically no issues with the production of any type, which is an incredible thing considering that a lot of the technical aspects of these tiles is very, very difficult to get right. I think generally the Japanese, whenever they do something, they do it with respect and with passion in completing that task and you see that in the products that they make as well. The clay comes from the very hillsides that surround the local areas. The glazes are extracted from various minerals that also exist in fairly local areas. They're then fired. The air needs to be right, it needs to be the right temperature. And those things combined make it kind of special for us. One of the things that people don't realise about ceramic production is that until the tile is fired is that it has no strength. And that's why I can just crush these pressed pieces in my hand. Here we are at the Omi factory kiln, or at least an old retired kiln called a tunnel kiln. They're about 100 metres long. The tiles move through this type of kiln, sort of like railway tracks, where in the centre of the kiln is the hottest temperature. So it takes approximately two and a half days, and the speed and the thickness and the chemicals involved, particularly the glazing, is what gives it this variation to create some of the most beautiful and unusual shapes, colours, tones and textures of glazed tiles. We can see on this side that as you increase the percentage of titanium dioxide with the same amount of colour, the colour can change quite dramatically from quite a pale white into the yellows. Probably the most striking change is when you do the reduction firing, which you can see in the very bottom row. This is still the same glaze that you can see in the row above, but by stripping the oxygen out of the kiln during the firing process, there's a very marked changes in the finished colours of the tiles. We're in the Tajimi Valley at the Naka factory, which manufactures the product that Artodomus first sold from Inax, and it's the Yoan Border range. Their glazes, they're clearly a Japanese, what I call earthenware character. Each bucket is a different batch, which they will then combine. You can see here, it's got the date that it's been produced, and that's what makes the Yohin as beautiful and have the variation, because you're going to mix two different batches that get sheeted and give you that Japanese ceramic effect in your tiles. We've seen in the prototyping rooms around the different factories how they try many, many different things until they find the best effect. But there is a science to it, and I think with experience you can gradually start to understand how the glaze will react and what sort of result you'll get each time. So we're here in Tokonami with Inasan here at the Nippon Mosaic Factory. This is a very special factory for Inax because it is the only factory in Japan that can make extruded mosaics. So an extruded tile is pushed through a mold like a pasta. Obviously affects the appearance, makes it a bit more handmade looking and a bit more uh, traditional Japanese and a bit unusual. At r 2 it's really important for us, whatever we sell, to be able to explain how the tile's made and why they're the quality that they are. You have to watch it being made. You have to talk to the factory owners. You need to understand the journey of the product. The experts that go on these trips just really get a lot of excitement out of seeing new and interesting things and are very inspired by the engineering. Sugi-san, how much does this mold weigh? It weighs at the one ton. One ton. Very, very heavy. <laughs> A lot of the technologies that are used today are very old, and old isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's actually quite often a very good thing. 